from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. Today's topic is education, emphasis, higher education, uh, and I've always contended that education is one of the cornerstones of a democracy, and without a high-quality educational system, then it's much more difficult to implement the principles of a democracy. Our emphasis, as I indicated, was higher education, but we're going to even go uh, into a more specific area and talk about the role of community colleges in America's educational system. In order to accomplish that goal, I'm so pleased to welcome to the program a man who is highly qualified uh, to address uh, community colleges from many perspectives. First of all, he's a successful businessman in North Idaho, and certainly the budgetary process and financing of education is a critical component. Uh, but even more than that, uh, this gentleman has finished a six-year term on the Board of Trustees of North Idaho College elected position, and he's also the immediate past chair of the North Idaho College Board of Trustees. Jack, you're a busy person. We appreciate you taking time to be with us today to discuss uh, uh, the field of uh, higher education and community colleges. Well, thank you, Tony. I, I really appreciate you asking me to be here. At, uh, uh, North Idaho College is very dear to my heart. I've been involved with that college for a long time, and, uh, and I appreciate you asking. And before we go into our questions, I should also add that you are an active member of the North Idaho College Foundation, which has raised uh, many hundreds of thousands of dollars that also promotes education at North Idaho College. Yeah, so, right, that's right, I am. So you come from many different as, uh, components and perspectives to this program. That's right. Uh, Jack, tell us a little bit about your own history before we get into some of the educational issues, about how you got involved uh, with your interest in North Idaho College and uh, both on the Board of Trustees and the Foundation. Well, Tony, I've been here for so long, sometimes I hate to admit how long it's been, but I've had a lot of friends that have been involved with uh, North Idaho College over the years, a number of different professors, and I was, I was asked um, oh, six years ago or so if I wanted to get involved on the, on the uh, trustee level. And at that time, I, I was thinking, you know, maybe I could be of some, some good to the college. I, as like I told you, I've, I've had a lot of friends that have been involved for a number of years and always had a strong interest, always knew that this community college meant an awful lot to this community, and so I had the opportunity to serve, and I, I look forward to it, and I enjoyed it very much. Now, during this whole time that you ex were there, uh, experiencing tremendous growth in this institution, both in student enrollment and uh, in facilities, and uh, as we move into that process, why don't you give us your perspective from six years ago to now where the college is and some of the things that you're most proud uh, well, happened. I, I, uh, yeah, I'd be very happy to do that. Six years ago, I think that we were going through a change. Uh, that change was... Uh, was very evident. Uh, Barry Schuler was here, and and he had been here for an awful long time, and and uh, Barry did a tremendous amount for for North Idaho College and for this community. But like in a governmental process, like we've seen happen here the last few days, when a change comes about, uh, it's time. And so I think Barry recognized that, and uh, some of the board members uh, felt like it was time to re uh, be replaced. And so, um, along with Joy Richard, she and I joined the board at that time, and. And at that, you know, at that particular instance, I think there was some kind of some miscommunication going on between the, the administration and the faculty. And uh, so I think that I, that was our biggest uh, challenge when we first got on the board six years ago was to bring back that, that uh, understanding between the administration and the faculty and be sure that everybody was working in a team effort. And uh, we accomplished that, I think, in a relatively early stage of the six years. And then, and then we got involved very heavily uh, with the new library and uh, my fellow trustees and I and Dr. Bennett and his very able staff members, particularly Steve Shank, we went out into the community and, and the community uh, stood behind our effort and we were able to bring this library into the, into the fold, so to speak. And it, uh, it's a beautiful facility and as like you say, education is the cornerstone of what goes on in this world. Uh, a library is the cornerstone of education as I see it. So uh, we're very proud of that. For, for our viewers who are off at some distance, the legislature appropriated a sizable portion of money for the library, but it was not sufficient to complete. And I believe that in this local effort, there was over $600,000 that was added to the appropriation of the legislature to complete the facility. That's right. Uh, and Dr. Bennett and I talked about that at great length. And uh, one of the things that Dr. Bennett did when he first came to North Idaho College was go out into the community and let the community know how important our community college was to the, how the whole community was to function. 
And we knew that if he did that and we let everybody know how important we were, that we went back out in the community and asked for some funding to help us with our library, that they would stand behind us. And within just a few, few months, we got the funding we needed to help bring about the new library, which, which was a tremendous accomplishment as far as I'm concerned. We could also tell our viewers that Hal's not only is the library, which is, as you've indicated, the heart of a campus, but we also have uh, a second floor that houses uh, the offices and classrooms of the University of Idaho, plus the computer uh, right. programs at North Idaho College and the instruction in that field. It's a, it's a, it's a state-of-the-art uh, library, Tony, as you've mentioned. Uh, it does uh, tremendous uh, uh, accomplishments, you know, with the tele telecommunication center, particularly along with the library. We're, we are definitely well within the 20th century as far as uh, libraries go, I can tell you that. I often described it when you mentioned the telecommunications and both within this building, the communication arts building that we're in, setting in mm -hmm, right now, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's tied to the library building. We have the capacity of uplink and downlink. We can tie into programs anywhere in the United States or other parts of the world, as, right. as well as go up and uh, share what we're doing here. Well, that, that, you know, that, that's an important thing that you mentioned that, Tony, because with this new library facility now, companies that are looking at North Idaho know that their engineers or their hierarchy, so to speak, is, are, are within just a communication link to continuing education and those kind of things, and that's very important to just economic growth, and, and so that library is going to play a key role. And it's so intelligent to put all that in place when you're building a building because it's less expensive when yep, you're doing the whole process. And one of the final point on that uh, that you triggered in my thinking with your comments, and that is there are ripple effects from making those kind of decisions. Not only does it create uh, quality to the instruction and training students for the future, but secondly, as you're saying, you were on the program recently dealing with another issue, and by the way, congratulations for your work on uh, the 1% one percent. One percent. Really? for its defeat. And, but in relation to that, the ripple effects of how industry and those that are looking for places to locate, they look where colleges are and, and the, those kinds of uh, technical assistance that they can get. Exactly. In fact, what you're saying there is very apparent with, uh, with the Harper's organization that um, uh, is going to bless us with their presence here in a few years. And, and it was, uh, I think, the final blow that got them to come here was the cooperative effort between North Idaho College through Dr. Bennett and the Spokane Community College in putting together a, a training program for their, for their employees that, uh, that, that, that turned the tide. And so those community colleges in that level, you see how important they are to the, to the well-being of the community. As we promised our viewers, we said we were going to talk in, in, in some, I guess, <clears throat> philosophical, theoretical ways about the community college. And now with all those years' experience that you've had, would you share with our viewers what you see as the role of community college? Or I'll put it another way, if I was asking you to define what is a community college, uh, what thoughts would you share? Well, I think as time goes on, people are going to recognize more the importance of a community college. A community college fits into the slot of education so well between a high school education and a four-year education. Some students just are not going to want to go on to a four-year education. And a community college is going to fill that gap. And it's going to be, because it's locally controlled, because it's the board of trustees are members of the community and that trust is placed on them through the electoral process, so to speak, we're able to then help the college and its administration and faculty mold that community college around the needs of that particular community. So those students that are going to be going to school here are going to hopefully find work, a place to work in that community. We're going to upgrade the, the status of the community because our workforce is going to be educated. And that's what community colleges do. And as we go on, I think we're going to find more and more importance in that direction. I really do. I think it's very important. And as you're doing that, are you fitting a role or a need that the university doesn't do or there's not even the role of the universities to do. Well, yeah, I think that I think that's uh, I think that's part of it. You know, the, there's a, a book that's out that we kind of use a little bit as a reference, and that is one that was put out by Dale Parnell. I'm not sure you're, if you're familiar with that or not. And I think the title of it is something along the line of the neglected majority. We're talking about all those students who are coming out of high school that really don't have a set plan to go to a four-year institution, and those are the that's the workforce in this country and. Dale Parnell says, and I think that the North Idaho College has taken a lead in that, and I'm very proud of the fact that they are, is that we can take a two-year community college education and key that to the last two years of a high school education, and the student can actually select some sort of a, of a, of a, of a major, so to speak, as their junior year in high school and take the last two years in high school as a prerequisite to the two years that they take in a community college and actually get a four-year degree as they see it 
at least in some kind of a particular ed uh, process that they can go out in the community and be a, an educated, informed uh, employee. And I just think it's a tremendous program. I really do. So that, that's really interesting. So they, they wind up really with within uh, two years after high school, actually four years of a technical training and background. Well, it is. And it's kind of a, what they call a two plus two program or a tech prep program. But as I see it, you know, you could even do this in such a way that as a junior in high school, at the, end, at the start of their junior year, they could be selecting a major. And you know, a lot of these youngsters, when they get to be a junior in high school, you know, they don't know what they want to do. They're at loose ends and they're kind of got girls and cars are the most important thing going for them. But if they start seeing that by taking the last two years of a high school and see the reasons why they're taking those courses, and at the same time fit those into the last two years of their, uh, two years of a community college, they actually have a four year degree. It's not a four-year degree like it would be from a four-year institution, but the important thing is they've got all the educational base to get them to do what they, what they want to do. And I just think it's, it's just a wonder. When you, you go around the country and, and, and go to these different uh, association meetings with community college trustees, whenever they're talk, this subject comes up, it's just an immediate draw for all these people because they know how exciting it is. Another experience you had, another population that the community college serves, in addition to those young people that are in high school or coming out of high school, is is older women and men who have are changing careers. Or exactly. I understand that mo most people now uh, in this high tech world we live change occupations three or four times. Right. Would you speak to that question and what the role of the community college is with well, returning adults? I, I, can, I can speak on a real personal level. I've got a brother-in-law who got laid off in that last mine closure in Wallace and he came down is now taking uh, HVAC air conditioning heating here and it's a real important thing in his life. He was a you know, to a point where he didn't know really what to do and this whole program opened up to him and his future is going to be a bright one just because the community college is available to him. And at the same time, these programs are kind of keyed to what the needs of the community are. And it's uh, and because of the fact that it is controlled locally, and again, that's the most important part I can talk about this community college thing because we're able to move one way and another as the community demands a uh, certain education. And, and that's the best for our students because they're going to have a place to go once they come out. And for those who are not familiar with community college, these, these populations that we serve are, are, are many and diverse. A third area that I would ask you to speak to, and that is the students that are coming out of high school, or some are even a little bit older coming back, and they want to prepare themselves for a baccalaureate or master's or, 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 or right. doctorate. And so there is a very, and this college is a very, very large population that is preparing academically to transfer. And so would you like to speak to the question what the role is the community college in that area? That's right. It's, it's, it's as, as important part as the 2 plus 2 program is, Tony, because it gives these students a chance to be at home. They can be working part-time and still getting a, the first two years of their, of their liberal art part of their education out of the way, and then they can transfer to uh, a four-year institution after that. In fact, that's part of what the 2 plus 2 program is actually, is you could be 2 plus 2 plus 2, you know, the last two years of high school, two years of community college, and then go on to get a baccalaureate degree at a university. And it's just really an exciting way to look at education as I see it. The other important part Thanks. about this, too, talking about this fiscal responsibility business, you know, you're, if, if we can take these two, these tech programs, you know, and we can, we can interchange faculty, for instance, and use, you know, some of our faculty to help teach those, those last two years of high school and vice versa, so that there's a, a real use of, a combined use of facilities and any number of things we can come out, come out of this. This takes me back a little bit to something you talked about earlier, and that is to uh, uh, in, uh, meeting certain uh, budgetary crunches and so forth. The fact that when you have the telemedia system where you can have a faculty member at one campus that's a very great expert in the area, but you can have uh, classes at other campuses that are hooked up through this telemedia system, mm -hmm. that uh, that instructor, that professor's knowledge can be spread to a larger group, but also it's still that classroom setting when they can, through television screens and all, That's communicate right. with one. The, uh, our new libraries is really an interesting process to go over and see how all this is done. You just get, they interact with each other. It's really a, it's a very interesting process. One final area of a population that we don't want to miss, and it's hard to cover them all in, in a 30-minute sure. program, but also at North Dakota College and other community colleges around the nation, in addition to those that are coming back for preparation academically or vocationally and so forth that we've identified, there are some individuals and communities that have completed their formal education, but there is quality of life or the Renaissance approach is getting interest in uh, maybe a hobby or uh, something to that extent. And there are a lot of programs and courses where you can come down and just uh, take pottery or, right. or, or painting and so forth. And do you think that is an important role for the community college? Well, definitely so. You know how much fun that is to 
broaden your educational base a little bit. Uh, I know that uh, my wife and I are interested in coming down and taking conversational Spanish, and we go down to Mexico now and then. We can we can at least converse with the with the with the uh, with our hosts. But um, I think that's interesting. They've got all kinds of interesting programs from fly tying to mushroom identification, and it's a. Uh, and, it's just, and again, those things are keyed around the interests of the people in our community, and that's, that's what makes it so important. Mm -hmm. Let's move into uh, some decisions that, that uh, have to be policy decisions have to be made and by boards and so forth. And I know one thing that you were very, very interested in as a member of the board was the whole budgetary process. I just want to really give you an open-ended question to talk about what is the status, and not only here in Idaho, but around the country with the budget areas and when there's never enough resources for all the demands that are coming. And Jack, what would you recommend to other trustees that would be watching this program in other states about how do you want, how does one address the budgetary uh, constraints? Well, that, the budgetary constraints are going to be ongoing, Tony. We know that to be the case. There's just never enough money when it comes to education as far as I see it. Education, if you are, you've already alluded to, is the backbone of this country. So. Uh, we can't spend enough money on education, but still there's constraints for whatever reason because of uh, just we went through this 1% initiative thing here where some people feel like education gets too many of the dollars. But we take what we get and, and gladly, always knowing we need more. But as far as a trustee is concerned and, and those of us at North Idaho College and my fellow trustees, and we agonized every year over the budgetary process and it was a uh, it was accomplished because we had trust with each other, not only from an from a administrative level with Dr. Bennett and his deans, but the, but the faculty and the administration and, and, the, and, the, and the Board of Trustees collectively worked together to, to try to make all ends meet, so to speak. And it was an agonizing, agonizing process. You know, you have to keep a balance between uh, uh, the operation of the campus itself and the physical plant and be sure everything is, is stayed in good order because that's part of our public trust as elected mm -hmm. officials. But at the same time, we have a great interest in our faculty and be sure that they get paid a, uh, a salary that they're well deserving of. And it's hard a lot of times to make those two things come together. But as I say, it's an agonizing process. But because you have trust with each other, and we do at North Idaho College, you're able to, to uh, bring around a, uh, a solution. We don't always agree, but uh, we get it done, and we get it done within the budget. We're not a penny over budget. There's not a bit of red ink in this college. When you deal with that and you, you know, you've identified the salaries for faculty and other staff and you have your capital ongoing expenses for facilities and so forth, based on all that, do you, what kind of concept do you have? The, I, I guess I'd ask you for the, for the viewers and people who might be interested in the future is, and I've only identified two, but, but looking at a budget, well, how many major categories do you think that uh, should be in place to deal with the different uh, expenses that an institution uh, such as community college would have? Well, you know, we have, we have two major components of a community college, the physical plan on one end and the mental plan on the other, and both of them have to be well cared for. We have, at North Idaho College, we have got some just some tremendously talented people. We want to keep those people here. This is all, that's all there is to it. And we have to be able to provide a, a working salary so that we, not only do we have a beautiful place to live, but they can make their ends meet. So you have that dilemma along with the physical plan itself, but of course, you know, you need to keep some money around and try to have some available to us for expansion. You know, we just got through doing our library. We have a demand and those kind of needs. And the whole thing all comes together for trying to provide a quality education for the students that we serve. And so really it, it varies from year to year of what our, our needs are. And, and the trustees will look at our various, uh, what we think are needs over the coming 12 months and sit down and try to formulate a budget that's going to fit those needs as, as, that, as that Board of Trustees uh, uh, feel their, those needs are going, are, are going to be. So I'd like to preface my next question by indicating that for our viewers who don't know you, you have been an articulate spokesperson for local control and the importance of local control, and you've mentioned on this program today too. Uh, in dealing with, with that concept and that position, when the federal government comes in or the state government comes in, a lot of times they will bring in dollars and, and there are restrictions on how that can be spent. But the other thing they do oftentimes they will give one startup money for a program, but after getting one committed to that with staff and programs and facilities, after one or two years, they will disappear from the scene, and, mm -hmm. and therefore, one's own revenue will have to pick that up. Um, what is your position on those kind of programs, and how, how does one best walk delicately through uh, both grants with restrictions and, secondly, startup funds? Well, we've had... Uh 
some real good fortune, quite honestly, with these grant programs. We've got a number of programs that have started uh, on this campus through some uh, federal funded grants that we have decided the programs were, were of such value that we found a way to fund them even after the grant money disappeared. Some of them uh, we let go by the wayside, but in most instances it's been a, uh, they've been very, very rewarding for this campus. Uh, we have a very active grant writing program. Uh, some of the uh, successes are, uh, have been monumental, as I say, and, and, uh, but I think it's, a, I think it's a, a good way to help fund some of the shortfall is to see if we can get our, our big brothers to help us out a little bit. And they don't, they don't demand too much from us. We've we got a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good free head in how we can handle those decisions. So. Another, another question that, that often arises is that everything goes up, of course, and it's more expensive. And, in dealing with funding at North Idaho College, a lot of our viewers may not know that we get it from different sources, including tuition fees of the students. Would you identify, and other, other colleges and other parts of the country that have this kind of funding or a different kind of funding, I guess what I'm attempting to ask is that we don't put all of our eggs in one basket. Uh, what are the major sources of funding that, for community colleges that uh, can keep the price down somewhat for the student who doesn't have uh, a significant income. Well, I think it's it's good management as much as anything, Tony. You know, we we discussed some of the obvious fiscal mm -hmm. uh, where we get our, our dollars, you know, through the grants or through taxation or through um, uh, tuition and fees and and uh, state funding. Uh, but really, you know, we we watch our dollars very closely at a community college level. And again, you know, we're we're a small community. The the board of trustees are elected by the by the, by, the, by the community it's at large, and, and we take a lot of pride in that. And I think that you know, how we spend our dollars is very, very important to us, and we want to be sure that, that uh, out the back end of all this comes the most important part, and that's a quality education for our students. And um, I've never seen a time on that, any one of my board meetings that I've been involved with that we have been very cognizant of how we spend our money. And uh, we, get a, we get a lot of, lot of bang for our buck, so to speak, and I think that is, again, is what community colleges really bring to the community is a quality education for the lowest possible price, and um, and we don't we don't let uh, the low price change the quality of the education we have, and that's why we were so concerned about that one percent initiative business. But uh, we resolve that, and uh, hopefully we're going to find some tax reform that will help give the property owners a a little bit of uh, a little bit of relief. All the statistics that I have seen uh, comparing community colleges with four-year colleges and universities is that the amount of money that is spent to uh, educate those individuals at community colleges uh, on a per-student basis is much lower than the four-year. And I know the four-year institutions have to have a lot of expensive programs and graduate programs and smaller mm -hmm. classes and so forth. Do you think that is one of the great assets of community colleges that because it is lower per student uh, that that that's opened up higher education to more people in society. Yeah, I, th I think that's definitely so. You know, I've had a number of people who tell me that their youngsters decided to go to North Idaho College, you know, and, I'll, and I say, well, number one is it's going to save you some money, and number two is you're not going to find a better education process any place in North Idaho College. Those kids for those first two years are going to get the, the finest there is at a much reduced cost. And again, I think that's because you're able to control our dollars, we're able to watch every bit of it, and uh, we all have um, uh, uh, a common direction, and that is uh, uh, this, this community college process. I've also seen some studies both for K through 12 and uh, particularly uh, primary schools, and also seen at the college level that the, the faculty student ratio is very important. And so right. it's my understanding that the first two years of community colleges, the, the number of students in a particular class is much smaller. There are many universities, large universities, where there'll be 800, 900 students in one lecture class, whereas community college, even though those have grown in size because of the, the economic crunches, but uh, it's a lot easier to work with 30 students or 40 students than 800 in a class. That's right. And so you're saying that that's part of the process of, well, that's of one the budget of the reasons decision why making. I think that's true, and, and, uh, and uh, we recognize at the same time that those students, when they have a class of 30 students as opposed to 300, that they're going to walk out of there with a, a tremendous education. And on top of that, the faculty member that's teaching them is probably one of the finest faculty members there is in that particular field in the United States of America. That's a quality of faculty we have at North Idaho College. Well, it's obviously you're very sold on being a spokesperson yeah. for the, the quality at North Idaho College, and that's appreciated by those who are affiliated with North Idaho College. Uh, 
As we look into the future of education, President-elect Bill Clinton has emphasized several things, and one of them throughout the campaign was education, another one was health care, and of course the whole economic picture and jobs. But I haven't studied in depth, but he has indicated during some of his speeches that he'd like to, to create a national uh, trust fund uh, with the idea that any person who is desirous of higher education, uh, it would be able to take advantage of that uh, desire that they have, obviously with an understanding that they are serious about pursuing that. Do you think this is going to create uh, a new approach to both four-year and two-year schools, and is this somewhat revolutionary? And um, you know, you talked earlier about this change mm -hmm, comes mm -hmm. there so often. And I just like to get your reaction to well, I, the role I really, of the federal government in doing I that. I really, quite honestly, Tony, don't really know what's going on in that mm -hmm. regard. Uh, my concern, whenever the federal government gets too far, far involved in anything, is that you sometimes lose that control. And those are the things that I just wouldn't want to happen to us. Here we know what our costs are. We can keep those those costs uh, uh, well monitored. And we have a taxing process right now that allows these students to come to school for a minimal amount of dollars in relationship to what other things in this world cost. And uh, so I, I don't know what uh, President Clinton is going to do in that regard, but I can tell you that I would be resistant to too much federal involvement because I think that we lose our, we lose our control, which is, uh, as I see it, is the real backbone of what a community college is all about. I want to take advantage of your background and experience in asking this question. I think it's often very important to look toward the future and what we might anticipate happening. Now with your background in education and, and as a trustee, what do you foresee as one of the greatest problems facing all areas of higher education and particularly community colleges, say within the next decade? Well, I think we've kind of talked about it already. I think the biggest challenge is finding a way to educate this mass of people out there that really aren't, that don't have a mindset for higher education. We've got to somehow stimulate the interests of these young people at an early age to get them directed towards a productive life. And uh, I think a community college is the, is the right tool, quite honestly, or I wouldn't be here t talking to you about it nor be that interested in what community colleges are. But that's our goal. We've got to get people to understand that in order to succeed in this world, you need to be educated. You need to be educated about yourself and your fellow man and the world you live in, and to be educated enough to be able to do something that's going to give you a reasonable return for, your, for, for a lifestyle. And it's only going to come through education, and I think the community colleges are, the, are going to be the people that, uh, that accomplish that. That's a very important note on which to end the program. I've got the signal that we're out of time. And Jack Beebe, thank you for being with My us. My pleasure, Tony. Thank you. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you've enjoyed our program, and I'd like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will discuss another important subject. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of Telemedia Services on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.